So it's my lucky day. Why? Because look at this beauty. These are part of a Bronco step, a full length step. And what we'll, you're gonna actually kind of see through the process, we'll start with a, a 20 foot long uh, piece of inch and an eighth material. We'll load it on this machine, on that delivery. It'll cut all of the holes. These holes are actually where we're gonna put a nut cert in. And then it'll actually cut both the length of the pipe, but also the shape that we want on the end of the pipe. It'll actually do the coping. Uh, on the pipe and then it, it actually marks the pipe also so that we know where to load it in our vendor. Uh, not sure where it is on that one, but um, actually these get marked? Do all these get marked? No, these no, are these the uh, get marked, cross yes. braces. Okay, these are the cross. So this is actually a straight section, doesn't get bent. But the ones that get bent actually have a mark on it so you know where to load it. Yeah, so here's an example. If you look right there, okay. you actually see that's a mark that tells us where to load it into our vendor. Is that T for Titan or? Uh... It can be. <laughs> it can be T for Titan if you're ready to do some private label parts. <laughs> yeah, actually, so you'll line that up with the edge yep. of the uh, of the mandrel on the die. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or on the, uh, sorry, on the die itself yep. on the mandrel vendor. And then this will line up with the end of the die. I see cars. Do your thing, man. Do your thing. I'm just gonna talk while you're doing it, if that's okay. So he's gonna load it. This will actually clamp it. Like that mark that, that we showed you earlier. That's all good. That's easy. That mark actually basically dictates where that pipe gets put in. So the machine kind of knows where to start. Yeah, he's like, you need to leave this area, sir. <laughs> I could have been. <laughs> it made me nervous that he was nervous. <sighs> we gotta look at this. Hey. What? We got distracted. Finish. Surface finish afterwards, yeah. Um, the only stuff that doesn't is if we're doing something in stainless. Like this is an example, it's a bracket. Um, so that's a bracket that we make in stainless. It doesn't obviously need any kind of yeah. surface prep or, uh, or any kind of anodizing or powder coating because it's not going to rust. But everything else that we do essentially gets highly powder coated. Right? So you saw the laser running, but it was only running two. The same laser actually does flat sheet as well. And what happens essentially is we load a, a five by 10 sheet of material in there. The laser will cut the shape out. We'll unload it on the other end. This machine is called time saver. That time saver essentially gives, gives the material a surface finish. So on something like this, running it through that machine, that time saver will give it basically that grain finish, take off any burrs that were on that part from the laser and any kind of imperfections that happen, you know, through the mill process. And then after it comes out of the time saver, we'll take it, 
after it comes out of the sand, we'll take it over here on this press brake. And essentially the press brake is what bends, bends apart. So like, there's an example of something that gets bent a few different ways. So started as a flat sheet, five by 10 sheet, gets surface finish, then it goes through this, gets bent, you know, and then basically goes to the next stage, which is gonna be welding. This will actually get a pin added to it that gets machined in the CNC area and will get welded to this part basically to come up with a bracket that then does something else. We started with a flat 5x10 sheet of stainless, you know, basically done the cutting, done the time saving, brought it over here, bent it, you know, basically with the press brake. We bent this, we cut this in the, in the tube laser, we bent this in the mandrel bender, we CNC this inside the CNC shop. This has been cut in the tube laser. You know, we, we take the screen, that's the only part we don't make. We add that and then we weld it all together and you basically end up with an oil pickup that other than the screen, everything else was made inside these four walls. And all started as some type of raw material, you know, somewhere. Same sort of thing there. That's a baffle for, for a, a oil, um, oil pan. And that, again, this started as just flat sheet. Got lasered out, you know, time saved, press brake, spot welded. You know, eventually it'll get uh, some light time flappers that get added to it. And then this goes with an oil pan and it's sold as an oil pan. Too. But that, that started as a flat sheet. It was, you know, was caught in the laser, then bent in the press brake. This will get added with an injection molded part that becomes a cup holder for the back of a bron Ford Bronco. So it doesn't look like much, but eventually with other components added, this becomes a cup holder in the back of a Bronco. That's all you, Eric. I'm going to have to get one. <laughs> exactly the same process. Starts as a flat sheet, gets lasered, runs through the time saver, that's what gave it that grain finish. Gets bent in the press brake. These studs are actually made in that uh, Swiss lathe that, that we saw kind of over there. And then we weld the studs into the bracket. This gets added with some urethane bushings and another billet piece and becomes an engine mount. What's that for? Uh, that's a super wrench. Yeah. This is for the Bronco side steps? Correct. No. And this is a, an example of a process we're trying to basically improve uh, you know, the throughput, essentially. We're, we're selling the steps at a higher rate than we can make them. We have five welders that are welding 10 hours a day, essentially five days a week. And so we're trying to take one, one process of these steps away from the welders and have it done by a robot, essentially. We'll still need the welders to do the rest of it, to do all the mock-up, do the quality control, make sure that everything fits correctly. And then the welder will just do like the bulk of one weld or two welds on the stand. Watch your eyes. They come out crisp. Um, the, the sickness stuff is really good quality. Uh, they they bundle the stuff together with clamps. It, it's, it's just a good. It's a good table. I mean, they have adjustable legs. I mean, there are some other obviously some other companies that are trying to hold it. A few others. Uh, the sickness stuff comes in from overseas. Yeah. And it's just good quality shit. Like we, you know, when you check the check the flatness on these tables versus some of the others, I think it's better. And it's a really versatile system. They have a bunch of different packs and, and ways to sort of fix it. This looks so mine. damn good. Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> I told you I gotta get one for mine. For the individual steps, the small steps, we sell about uh, about 40 pairs a day. Right now. I can wow. I like the long, I like the loose one. That's why these guys gotta be welding all day long, man. They can't. We don't have time to stop, they know it. Yeah. That's a big personal, personal project. I like it. I like it. That's it. Those are cool. Those are really cool. It's nice. Yeah, there's a full length. Yeah. On yeah, that's I like I like that one a lot. Yeah, let's get into the finish. Look at that. Come with that 
Yeah. With that version of the uh, gotcha. all the rock so This is the finished product, as you can see, on the Bronco. You know what I really like about this is it's all American made. You know, it's made right here. American part for American car. For 15 years. Uh, so having something new and fresh yeah. was fun and everybody got excited. And oh, yeah. There's all these new problems to solve. Um, and, you know, we just got down the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. and. Well, and it, and it challenges you, right? Like, yeah. you're doing the same thing over and over again, you know, like like with us with 2JZ, you know, it's it's pretty simple for us now. We've like, I've forgotten a lot of it, but like now we're doing the new A90 with the B58, it being more BMW based, it's like a completely new challenge for us, you know? Exactly. And Definitely. things are, are totally different, you know? Like we had air to air intercooler and now, you know, it's air to water intercooler, the intercoolers, part of the intake manifold you have so many more size restrictions um you know it's got di so you know we have to add port injection all these different things you haven't messed with so it's a complete yeah completely new challenge it's fun i came in the shop and it was, there was a crowd in the back of the shop you know we pulled it we pulled these broncos in and guys we've been working together on subarus for 15 17 years now and you had an entire crowd of people back here just looking at all these different <laughs> areas of all these nooks and crannies you want know, a completely different model and there's an entirely clean slate with all new problems to solve yeah uh and so it went from just let's try this out with an aos to hey it needs steps you know and we made these soft top dampers for the back and it just the idea started growing again and it just uh it's really taken off it's really taken off and so I'm, I'm not sure if you if you've noticed this also but you know when you you start to work on a new platform it's like it reinvigorates everybody oh yeah and it, it, it just gets everybody excited about new something spark. new you know we, we sort of mm -hmm. we you know the job can become mundane you know when you're doing the same mm -hmm. thing over and over again 10 years of the same platform with the same engine you know it becomes mundane and when you bring something new into the shop everybody gets excited about it as rick had mentioned it's opportunities to fix problems you know everybody starts their wheels start turning and it ends up being a collective of ideas and yeah. that's how we solve a lot of these problems it's a nascar toyota engine that just shows you the these you when you're a car guy you got all kinds of stuff laying around you're not even sure why yep that's one <laughs> what's up hello Man, all in pieces. Recently for, for uh, oil pump testing, so we can actually use the engine and all the oil passages that are in the engine and the pump mounted to the engine and actually measure flow and pressure. And we can measure flow basically, you know, out of the pump, before the pump, after the pump. We can measure pressure before the pump and after the pump, after the pump in the gallery, after the pump over here, you know, that feeds the turbo. We can take basically all of those measurements graph it all and basically see what changes we're making with an oil pump have, what effect they have on all those different numbers, essentially. So traditionally in motorsports, wasn't the Spintron mainly for uh, valve train development? Correct. Yep. And that's what we'll be using it for here. This is a FA platform engine uh, that we have some prototype valve train components. Uh, these FAs tend to have problems kicking rockers. Uh, and, and, with, and some other valve train problems, and so we're developing one of the things that I mentioned in the other room here in the lab uh, is we're developing a special rocker arm setup that uh, that will retain the rocker so that the rocker can't actually come off. Yeah. And so that's why we actually have this engine on the spin drum right now. So we'll be doing testing up to 11,000 RPM essentially on, on those rockers. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, this basically simulates you running. The engine like it's a, if it's in a car but it gives you a complete controlled environment to see anything that's going on obviously videotape anything that's going on any anomalies um and to be able to catch it and then obviously change components maybe even change spring pressures um add extra uh peak like for on the 2j we had a our timing belt well, it used to twist so we could add a secondary pulley to keep that you know, in line. So you're able to test, not only find the problem, but also test the solution for the problem in a controlled environment. Yeah. What, what it basically does is you have a big electric motor that's controlled by a variable frequency drive that is spinning the crankshaft and spinning all of the timing components and all of the valve train without any combustion events occurring. Uh, and so you don't have the influence of the combustion events like an engine dyno to sort of um, weigh into some of these things that you want to isolate problems on. 
Um, so the, basically, the big electric motor spins the, en spins the engine, but nothing's actually running. Where in the engine dyno, which is the next room that we'll go in, the engine actually is physically running outside of the car. So this will be our, our engine dyno cell, uh, our engine dyno room. And you'll notice that the engine dyno itself is actually bolted down to a pad, mm -hmm. an isolated pad. This pad is actually 24 inches thick uh, and it is isolated with foam around it and it's separate from the rest of the building. And the reason that is is to isolate the dyno from any kind of vibration or influence in the building itself. So you, you could have a forklift running outside that's running a pallet somewhere and you don't want that forklift to influence the very sensitive uh, instrumentation that's on the dyno. And so the dyno is actually isolated from the rest of the room. Um, and then of course, you know, you have systems like air intake that comes into the room, fresh air intake. Uh, this will actually cool any of the room air out of the room to, to keep the air fresh inside the room. And then you have exhaust will actually go out of these that goes out to a big exhaust system that's outside uh, of the room. Uh, and then we actually have another duct that's going to come in and will basically bring fresh air in just for the air filter itself. Um, yeah. So this, this, will be, this will be set up in the next, hopefully, three to four weeks. Uh, we'll, we'll actually get an engine on this and start testing. Uh, and what that does, it allows you to swap between, between platforms. So you can build a, a you know, adapter plate for a Subaru, or I can build an adapter plate for a Ford. Will you mainly use this for development or also like just a... You know, actually running an engine before you ship it to a customer. No, no run-in. This will just be for development work. You know, the problem with, with using an engine dyner for run-in is that it's it takes a lot of time yes. to set an engine on you know onto the dyno to hook up the cooling system, to hook up the air, mm -hmm. you know, to get the wiring harness for that specific application on the engine. You know, all of that takes hours, and then of course the run-in takes hours. Yeah. Uh, so you know, if, if we had to build that into the cost of every engine, you know, the price of every engine would go up by you know, uh, probably twelve to fifteen hundred bucks if we had to run in. And that was if it was a long block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it was a short block, the price of the engine would probably have to go yeah. up two and a half, you know, two and a half, three thousand bucks. Wow. Yep. If we ran in on the engine. But maybe we do it on every race car engine. Well, I was gonna yeah. say yeah. yeah. So um, like. If uh, I've been to like Rare Morrison and like on um, like because they pretty much all do race motors, but all, a lot of their street rod stuff, they have that you know option or that is built into the the price. And yep. since they do it so often, they've just like you guys have gotten efficient doing everything or able to s swap the motor. You know, and I think they can do like two per day per right. dyno. That's about right. About yeah. four to six hours basically. Yeah. To yep. set up and, and dyno an engine. If you're really good at it and you're doing the same platform every time, you know, exactly. every time over and over again. Yeah. Now, obviously, that being said, for a shop like ours, you know, we build 12 shorts a day and we build two longs a day. Mm -hmm. So for us to actually run in every engine, we have to have yeah. six dynos yeah. to, just to be able to run in engines. Wow. So Rare has like three. Same exactly like you said. Yeah, yeah, it's all based on volume. Yeah. It's yep. just numbers. Yeah, because yep. yeah, this is basically our off the shelf stage four extreme. Nice. So, I mean, you could just go buy a long block and you can get the same setup we have. Nice. Awesome. So, your stage four, uh, so your stage four kit, I mean, how much does it typically make and, and what do you ever see, I would say, like, fail on them that you're trying to improve on? I mean, this power really, is a Rod bearings. Yeah, rod bearings. Rod bearings. Yeah. It's awesome. He was telling us about your QC your QC process on the rod bearings and yeah. all of that. So I mean it's, it's awesome one. just like walking through here seeing start to finish yeah. on every part, the engines, yeah, yeah parts, uh, your your uh, machine room, everything like that to going in running and then Taking it apart. What did it make roughly? Again. It makes a lot of honor. For now. That's awesome. Yeah. We gotta turn it up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, which, friendly competition. Which uh, Garrett's on there? Uh, 42. 42 is 1200. Well, how much this is now? 50. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're slowly kind of rebuilding all of the arcade games. That's awesome. Um, but. Gives basically gives our employees somewhere to come to relax. You know, either. Hey, like Nero, you need you need this. This is what we need. Yeah, Nero, you're gonna have to step your game. Yeah. Show this, this, is, this is it. 
about 30 miles out of the city. <laughs> oh man, this is where arguments are gonna be solved. Yo, <laughs> dollar bets, dollar bets, dollar bets. Land where we're at is like. Oh wow. Oh. It's not much less here. About yeah. 25 acres. Oh, I will. I will. I will definitely work yeah. out here. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, you gotta keep in mind we're also within we're within 45 minutes. Yeah, you know, sure. richest richest counties in the country. Yeah. You know. You can see he's shopping and everything. Yeah, it's even impossible. Yeah, impossible too. I'm sure it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, you got so much uh, military. Yeah. All DOD work. They're all machine. That's why it's also tough to find days. Yeah. Like they say, it must be tough. Yeah. Yeah. We're not gonna go. Yeah. This is so wild. Yeah. This is basically a space. This is what Nier wanted to do. Space we use as a buffer really for inventory. Yeah. Uh, so it's a good area for it. If we have a, if we have a container of let's say ten or fifteen different SKUs coming in, you know, we'll we'll put eighty five percent of the inventory up here and then the other fifteen percent we'll make the rack downstairs for the shipping department and then as the shelf stock gets depleted downstairs, we just move it from the upstairs inventory to the downstairs inventory. Those are floor mats yeah. for the front of the Bronco. This goes inside that, you know, that very yep. trunk area. Yep. I might have a list for you. These, these, are, <laughs> these, are, these are really nice. No, I like it. It's good, really Do you good put stuff. your logo on them? Yep. Right yeah, here? There's yeah. a dome. Exactly. Yeah. You got it. Um, you know, obviously we have, we have the hose itself made for us, right? Because you can't actually in the States, this is heater hose. But in the States, you actually can't buy 30R9 spec, SAE spec uh, hose any larger than half of an inch. And in our aero separator kits, we need to go all the way up to about three quarters of an inch. So we actually have the hose made for us in that specification. And then, you know, when it comes in, we kind of talk about how to cut it, we cut it. We, uh, we make the print collars, we make the fittings, we make this fitting, and then we put it all together as a hose assembly, essentially. And by the time it leaves here, it's a finished part. So that's basically a, a kit bag, essentially, uh, where this machine has multiple stations, and as you're pulling parts, you're dropping them down into a funnel. The machine actually weighs the part itself, and you determine, I want eight bolts, I want six of these washers, I want 10 nuts, and the machine knows every time you're dropping the part in how many of each you're dropping in and tells you to go to the next station. So if you don't drop enough nuts or you drop too many nuts, it'll let you know. You know, essentially, and then it bags it, you know, into a kit, and then that goes with other parts that eventually get packaged and sold as a, as a product, complete product. I've never seen zip ties so organized as well. <laughs> but you see, the, or, the zip ties are mad organized. Yeah. <laughs> They're organized. Well, oh, you didn't like, see how organized they are? Your two hours of video didn't take that out already? <laughs> you really think low of our clientele. This is what we call production. Uh, this is where we take all of the, uh, the essentially finished parts and turn them into products. So, you know, you have all these individual little parts that we have to assemble into a product, you know, along with other components, essentially. And that's what we're doing here. So this is where we assemble air oil, se air oil separators, we assemble our engine mounts, we assemble our steps, uh, you know, we'll assemble fuel rail kits, you know, all those kind of components essentially get assembled in this room. So if you want to look at it as anything, this is kind of assembly for parts versus the assembly for engines you know, that we saw earlier. So what we've walked essentially is about 85,000 square feet. Uh, and then we have about another um, 16,000 square feet upstairs, you know, between offices and storage. But behind the wall in the shop that we didn't kind of walk um, is a, another 33,000 square feet. We currently have a tenant in that space. When we bought the building, the tenant next door had just signed a, a lease with the prior owner of the building. So we're stuck with them basically for another three years. But in three years from now, we'll be expanding into the other 30, 33,000 square feet. Next door. So when that happens, that's when we might bring the powder coater over. Yeah. So, but for right now, we're going to leave the powder coater where they are. Nice. We have a. We drove when we drove in. We saw what is an IEG performance, like auto sales. Yep. Pictures. Yeah, that's that's our original building. Um, 
the that was the first location where we actually started, mm -hmm. which the, the main building itself is about 12,000 square feet. We very quickly outgrew that 12,000 square feet, added on a second floor with a mezzanine, uh, added on to the back of the building a little bit, and then eventually there was a pole building, a three-sided pole building that was outside that we enclosed, added another 5,000 square feet there when we opened our body shop. Um, and we, we essentially just outgrew that space very quickly. Uh, and when we were searching for properties, we bought this, this place and decided basically to leave our body shop at the old location and car sales, which, you know, which still sells cars a little bit um, at the old location and, and just moved all of the manufacturing and, and engine building over to this place. Nice. Oh yeah. There's that, that part that you saw earlier that was just the steel bracket that gets cut on the laser and these get lathed. And then we add this, which is a billet piece that we machine in the CNC area. We buy this stud, we buy the nut, we buy the bolts, we put it all together. But even the bolts, for instance, I, we can't buy that plated to match the same plating that's on the bracket, so I have them plated by the same people that plate the bracket, just so that it looks all uniform. This piece. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I showed you that piece. Yeah. Okay, so this piece gets added, hold it on. This gets added. <clears throat> of course, we put in all the bite on flaps. And then this eventually goes with a cast oil pan and becomes an oil pan. Uh, oil pan kit. You guys saw the pickup. Yep. 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 And the pickup goes inside of this essentially. Wow. On to the next tour. Join, subscribe, click like, you know, give us some comments, um, give us some feedbacks. Any places you want us to see, let us know. So it's my lucky day. Why? Because look at this beauty.